In this video, we will go through the typical workflow that uh, we use when creating pages from Sanity. I will be using Tinduf Store as an example. It's a simple online store we published recently, and it's completely managed by Sanity. So on the right, we have the front end of the store itself. This is what users see when they land on the store. And on the left, we have the Sanity Studio. This is where you manage content and the structure of the pages. A few important notes here. Um, first of all, this structure here you see on the studio is completely customizable and it usually varies on the project so that we can offer the content management experience that makes more sense for that specific project. Um, a few things here that are quite important. So first of all, we have a guide in uh, all the Sanity Studios we provide to our clients. And this guide is simply to um, onboard you quickly on the on sanity when you use it the first time um, you don't really need it because you will see that it's very simple to create pages but um, it could be relevant and it could be helpful especially if we add some feature that is specific to this project now um, we have a home page section this is where we manage the content of this page here that you can see and we have a blog this is where we manage uh, blog articles um, and their translations and, and whatnot. And then we have the pages folder, which is relevant uh, here in this demo since I would be creating a page. So if I go on the pages folder, the first thing I see is uh, a few filters based on the language. Um, so here we have English and German because the store is available in just English and German. But of course, we can customize these and it's very easy to do so. Uh, we can also have um, a website that has no, lo uh, no locale at all. Or we could also make these filters um, not based on language only, but on language and country. Example, English USA or uh, country only like uh, Netherlands, for example. So it's all based on the project itself. And I want to create an English page. So I press on English and right away I can see all the English pages that have been published previously. I can edit them, manage them, even um, unpublish them. And I want to create a new page here. So let's do that. I press this button here and I'll call this page about safe because it will all be about me and I will go to the SEO tab and here I can create a URL for, for the page. You can type anything that's compatible with the URL or you can press generate which will generate a URL based on the title I put previously and this field also makes sure that the URL generated is unique so that it's not used by other pages and yeah. Now, I can control the visibility of this page. So right now, it's hidden by default. It means that once I publish this page, it will not be visible for Google to crawl. This could be useful sometimes for certain landing pages, uh, especially if you're testing on them. And I will keep it that way. If you want the page to be visible for Google to crawl, you can simply change it to public here. So there are a few SEO fields that are important. I will not fill up all of them, but I will fill up at least the required one, which is the title of the page. And uh, I will call it as well about safe. So now, now we have this. I want to also um, create a social sharing image for the page. And I can do that by uploading an image, a custom image. You can paste it here or upload it from your computer, or you can select uh, an image that already exists or you can generate one um, based on the branding of the website so for example here it took the title that I put previously I put it directly in the OG image but I can also customize it and uh, type whatever I want and then I press generate and this will generate an OG image and populate it in the field automatically that is branded based on Tiluf store branding um, this, of course, is customizable and the branding itself uh, depends on the project. So I have my most important SEO fields filled up, including the URL. 
I can now go on the content and fill up the content of this page. So the first thing I will do is I will add a hero and immediately it tells me that the title of the hero is, is uh, required. So I do that, hi, um, save. And I want to select an image for the hero. I can either, same thing like the OG image, uh, paste it here, upload it, or I can select an image that already exists. This takes me to the uh, place where all our images are um, um, exist. And what I can do is I can filter by a tag that I added previously, and we'll get to how to add these tags later. And I'll filter by images that are made to be on hero banners, since our hero banners have very specific aspect ratios. And I will use this one. And to note, it did the content of the page uh, blindly. I will open it in a preview mode and I will put this here. Now, while I'm editing the page, I can see the uh, changes live. And uh, you can see as I'm typing uh, is about me. While I'm typing, the content changes on the right. And so I added a hero section. Let's just add another section to see how this would look like. Um, our pages are modular, meaning that they are composed of blocks or modules that are um, designed at the design stage and then implemented once only, and then they are reusable across all pages. So that's what's great about that. And um, these modules depend on the project, of course, and they could easily be added later on. So it's made for scalability. And what I want to add as a module, I want to show some of my favorites products. So here we made it so that it can select from products and I will see what products I like. So let's put a t-shirt here and maybe let's put a, a cap and a hoodie, here you go. And you can see the changes reflected on the right. I can move things around and that's also reflected. And I can add a title for this, my fav favorite products, a description, Notice that um, the design of these uh, modules and their content structure at itself depends on the design of the, the website itself. So this is just a structure that makes sense for the store. Oh, I see a typo, here you go. Now I have uh, my page, pretty much. Um, I can change the order of the modules if I want to. So if I want this page to, this section to be first or this one, and now when it comes to publishing pages, it's usually a collaborative approach. So it means that most of the times I'm not the only person responsible for this page. There could be um, other content managers that want to check it out um, or SEO managers to optimize certain keywords or also even designers to change certain images maybe that I, I used here. And um, what's great with the setup we provide using Vercel is that you can um, add comment on certain parts here. So here I can say, um, instead of saying products, um, I can say my favorite merch. And I leave that as a feedback to uh, the person who's editing this page. And then when they come on this page, they will see that. Of course, public users don't see that. Um, it's only internal uh, people. And based on this uh, feedback that they will see it like this pop up, uh, they can change the content here. And not only you can give uh, feedback comments on the website itself, but you can also give it to developers to improve certain things. So you can say, for example, here, improve the description of this field. And when a developer comes, they will see that that uh, that comment. Now I'm I'm done with my 
page and I'm ready to publish it. Uh, so to do that, I just simply press the publish button and if I go now on this uh, on this URL, the page should be there. 